All right, guys. So having carried out the whole experiment on the determination of the focal length of a convex lens, showing on the screen is the reading. That's the table of values obtained for this experiment. And of course, that's interesting. You see other columns have been obtained as well too as the instruction. Are you following right? That uh, I followed in carrying out this experiment requires. And uh, of course, you can see the column for U, the object distance, okay, from 20 to 45. The image distance V, you can see that we evaluated 1 over U. We evaluated 1 over V. We also evaluated V over U. All right, so you can look through that. I've already demonstrated how you carry out the experiment to get the image distance V, which is very important in this experiment because the object distance U was already given to us. So our main problem was to obtain the image distance V, which I actually demonstrated how to obtain that. So this is the reading, okay, from the experiment. Before I move on to answer certain other questions or make the analysis on how you approach other questions as might be required, I want to talk quickly about this approximate focal length value. Remember, I demonstrated how I obtained it using the window pane and I got 10 centimeter. However, a quick way of obtaining this that a student may choose to try, maybe if one notices that there, there is no time to round off the whole work, to do the whole analysis, you know, you may avoid this issue of window panes. And then, like I told you earlier, carry out your experiment without any defined measurement as maybe your lab technologist may require. For example, I did this and I came about the approximate focal length to be 10.30. What did I do? As if I wanted to carry out the experiment on the table, I placed my ray box at 0 cm mark. Then I placed the lens, the converging lens, at 40 cm. Which means, okay, if I have my ray box here, is that okay? And then the cross wire, then there is the meter rule, alright? Then I had to place my lens here. I had to place my lens, the distance from this point to where the lens is, 40 centimeter. That would be you. Is that okay? So what I had to do, the screen which is behind, the screen which is behind, you know, I had to adjust the screen to and fro, and then I got the sharp image at the point 13.9. 13.9. That is to say the distance between the convex lens and the screen gave me 13.9. That would call uh, V, 13.9 centimeter. So what I had to do was now use my lens formula that 1 over F is equal to 1 over U plus 1 over V, which gave us that this is equal to 1 over 40 plus 1 over 13.9. So solving for my 1 over F, I worked out the LCM of this. This is 13.9, the decimal number. To get the LCM, of course, you have to multiply this by this. That is 40 by 13.9. Let us quickly do it together and see. So that 40 times 13.9 gave me my LCM to be 556. Then, of course, 556 divided by 40 will give you 13.9. And then plus 556 divided by 13.9 will give us 40. So, adding up the numerator, 13.9 plus 40, gave us 53.9 over 556. So, the numerator is this. Now, watch. We have 1 over F equal to 53.9 over 556. You know, to get your focal length, now you inverse. This is 1 over F. So, the F goes up, 1 comes down. So, you have F over 1, which is F. And then you repeat the same thing here, 556 goes up, and then 53.9 comes down, then we get 556 over 53.9. So when I worked out this, look at the approximate focal length I got. And uh, of course, this is 13, 10 rather, 
this is 10.315 you know but there is something about uh, the focal length image and object distance since the image and object distance is measured with a meter rule is that okay the reading reading accuracy of meter rule in 0.1 are you following right 0.1 centimeter so for that reason if you have 10.3 according to the calculator it gave me 315 i'll just record 10.30 Okay, after the first decimal, the next should be zero because of the reading accuracy of meter rule, which is 0 0.1 cm. Okay, so um, this becomes our approximate focal length. So you see, without stressing myself, going to focusing the image of a distance object through the ray coming, you know, which I used window pane, I could just demonstrate a fast um, experiment not following any defined instruction by the uh, technologist okay i just had to find let me place my ray box at zero centimeter mark of the meter rule then the length at 40 so the object distance which would be the distance from ray box to uh, the length is u which is 40 centimeter i now adjusted my screen and got a sharp image of my uh, cross wire in the ray box which of course the distance between the the length and screen gave me 13.9 centimeter then of course using the lens formula i got 10.3 and this 10.3 is still okay it's not bad are you following if by the approximate method through the window pane i got 10.0 of course it still works in line this experiment you can never tell as to how uh, very correct i was with that window pane uh, method of getting the approximate focal length are you following right so uh, one cannot be 100 percent correct in running uh, an experiment as it is at least there should be room for one or two errors as you might be asked to calculate by your um, technologist which you could see in your in the instruction given to you okay so we have this as 10.30 centimeters i had to show you this so if you don't want to go stress yourself using your window pane you can just carry a quick experiment out. I place my lens at 40. Let there be a good defined distance. Are you following right? Between the lens and the, the object. Okay, so I think that is that. Just showing you an alternative method of obtaining your approximate focal length for quick analysis. Now, I carried out the experiment actually to get the image distance V in each case. But again, let me tell you something. All right, uh, I am not actually saying you should do that. It's only when it becomes absolutely necessary. When you check your workload in the lab, what you need to do, are you following, right? And looking at time, you know that likely you might not be giving the whole time. You can actually work out your experiment as fast as you can. See, once you get the approximate focal length, you can use that range of value of F to calculate the image distance for each object distance. In your manual, you will be given, of course, you know the object distance u. So if you know all the object distance, like in our case, 20, 25, 30, 35, down to 45, and you've obtained the approximate focal length, you may actually choose to obtain the image distance without carrying out the full experiment. Are you following? But I always encourage students, please, as much as you can, do the experiment. Why I'm actually talking about this, or why I want to make this known to you, is considering time factor. Are you following? Aside the concept of how someone might be choked with time, I always encourage students to do the experiment. You can't continue manipulating the process. Are you following, right? So take note of that. But just imagine that you perceive that there is no time. What can you do? Once you know your approximate focal length, which is the first thing you even need to obtain before you start running your experiment, you can use the approximate focal length F, are you following right? And the given image distance U to calculate V. Are you following right? How about we try one quickly? Let us try one. Perhaps using this 10.30 I obtain as my approximate focal length. Remember, for the first experiment, the object distance U was given to be 20. So let us use that and then obtain our V. If the image distance will be close to what we obtained, I think they're about 21.5. Are you following, right? Let's see. 
using the lens formula 1 over f which is equal to 1 over u are you following and then plus 1 over v so we are dealing with for v okay for u equal to 20 cm because the object distance was given to us in the experimental procedure and then we know our approximate focal length f to be 10.30 cm then of course i can say 1 over 10.3 if you like, you put zero. The zero is insignificant here. Of, uh, equal to 1 over 20, and then plus 1 over V. Solving for that V, we have 1 over V equal to 1 over 10.3, then minus 1 over 20. You can work out the LCM of this term on the right-hand side, and so you would get 1 over V equal to... The LCM, since it's a decimal number, is going to be 10.3 times 20, and then I have 206. Quickly, if you do 206 divided by 10.3, you get 20. Use the 20 to multiply the numerator 1, you get 20. Then minus 206 divided by 20 would give us 10.3. Use the 10.3 to multiply the numerator, you have this. Now, if you work out the numerator, we are going to get 0.7 all over 206. Now, watch. To obtain the image distance now, you inverse v over 1 equal to 206 over 9.7 so that the image distance would be 206 over 9.7 so let us see what we are going to get working this out 206 divided by 9.7 you see here it gave me 21.2 cm and you know by carrying out the experiment i actually obtained 21.5 and of course, within the limit of experimental work, 21.5 and 21.2 are approximately the same, can be used. Remember, like I said, error could have affected the reading. So do you see what I did? Once I know the approximate focal length, because this is the guy I want to test in carrying out the experimental work. Knowing that this is what I am testing, if I observe that there is no time, I can actually do calculations to obtain the value of V, the image distance, without carrying out any further experiment. Because I also understand that sometimes, for a student to get to know that this is the position where I have obtained the sharp image of the object, is also another problem for some student. Okay, so checking for time, checking for whether you may have issues with getting the image distance to know when the sharp image of the object would have been found. If you are worried about that, just struggle to obtain the approximate focal length, which is the first thing you do, then using the given object distance u, you can use the lens formula to calculate the various image distances, v. Then with that, you get your v in the table of value, then evaluate 1 over u, 1 over v, then v divided by u. So this is what you can do to actually avoid any much stress as you may think about the experimental procedure. Okay, having said this, please, let's proceed. Now, uh, you are asked to plot a graph of 1 over u against 1 over v. So once again, take a look at the screen. The graph looks like what you're seeing. So after I plotted the graph, this is what I obtained the shape of the graph. Is that okay? And so you see it's a, a negative graph. It is a negative graph going this way. And that is what is expected. Now you observe that the graph has intercepts on both axes, on vertical and horizontal axis. That is 1 over u uh, and 1 over v axis. Of course, that is expected. Is that okay? All right. So um, the next question you ask to record the intercept on both axes you can see the graph okay so this is the graph showing on the screen now you notice that the graph is a negative graph and it is expected because you are asked to plot 1 over u against 1 over v actually from uh, the formula less formula you have 1 over f equal to 1 over u plus 1 over v if you make 1 over u subject of the formula it's going to be 1 over f and then minus 1 over v. Or if I rewrite it the other way around, it's going to be minus 1 over v plus 1 over f. 
this is something you could do as a rough work. Are you following right? And then watch, you are plotting 1 over u against 1 over v. So this simply means we have 1 over u as our y-axis. If you compare it with the equation fx and then plus c, you would notice that our y-axis is 1 over u, as you're seeing it, vertical axis. x-axis is 1 over v, as you're seeing it, horizontal. Okay, uh, on the screen, you can see the graph. So, what is multiplying this x? That is, what is multiplying the quantity you plotted on the horizontal axis, which is slope? Are you following right? m, which is slope, is equal to negative 1. Look at it. Minus 1 is multiplying 1 over v, which is the quantity we plotted on the horizontal axis. So for this first graph, the, the slope is going to be negative 1. Now we are asked to obtain the intercept. The intercept, if we call it c, is equal to 1 over f. Then we do the comparison, y is 1 over u, x axis is 1 over v. Gradient or slope, m, is minus 1. Intercept c is 1 over f. So it means that for this graph, the intercept C is 1 over F. And then looking at that, what was the intercept value that I obtained? Look at where it cuts that axis. Okay, that actually is at 0 0.096 as obtained. And so this is going to be 0 0.096 equal to 1 over the focal length. So that the focal length will now be 1 over 0 0.096. And uh, reaching out for a calculator, pressing 1 over 0 0.096, and then 1, we obtain 10.4. So this is 10.4 centimeter. So this is the focal length obtained from the vertical axis, 1 over u. Is that okay? You are asked to record the intercept on both axes. The one I did is for the vertical. 1 over u axis, one can also do for horizontal, is that okay? And uh, of course, when you carry out the experiment and you plot your graph, you get the intercept on both axis. Read out that of the horizontal as well too. Now we are required to calculate the focal length of the lens from the intercepts. That's question 3, which I've done already. Then calculate the error in focal length as obtained in number three, error in focal length. To deal with error in focal length, we could solve using error in slope divided by the value of slope, equal to error in focal length divided by focal length. This will require that you have to obtain the vertical scatter of this graph, that point that did not enter that straight line. And of course, in one of my previous videos, I've already explain how you can obtain the error in slope. So, calculate the error in slope from a vertical scatter. I think error in slope has the formula 4 of u all over nr. Okay, 4 times the vertical scatter divided by the number of points times the range, which I want to believe by now you know how to do that. If you have challenges on how to obtain the range and the vertical scatter, you can Please go through the playlist, you would see a video lesson explaining that. So you get the error in slope of your graph. Let us assume you've obtained the error in slope, okay? If you get the value, can I just assume something for it, please? Let us assume that the error in slope is 0 0.5, for example, okay? If it is 0 0.5, then it implies that we are going to have 0 0.5 all over the slope of the graph, which I told you is negative 1, and that will be equal to error in focal length, which you don't know, divided by the focal length. And of course, the focal length is 10.4. 10 10 okay, so solve for the, focal, the error in focal length. That will give us 0 0.5 times 10.4, of course, divided by minus 1. That we would not need our negative, okay? We don't need it. Why calculating the error? Negative is simply to show us the shape of the graph as we have there. 0 0.5 multiplied by 10.4 gives us 5.2. So error in focal length is 5.2, which means we are going to move on to quote our focal length to be equal to 10.4 plus or minus 5.2.
Okay, so remember, like I said, whatever you obtain in your area of focal length, that is what you fix here. Don't fix my own value. <laughs> it's based on the experiment you carried out. Now, in the next instruction, you are required to plot a graph of u over v against v. u over v against v. From the table of value, the graph of u over v against v looks like what? You are going to see on the screen. So this is the graph. And of course, you see the graph. The shape of the graph went this way because it's a positive uh, graph. How do we know that this is supposed to be a positive graph? Even from the theory guiding this equation, you had u over v to be v over f minus 1, then equal to n. This u over v is the same as your m, and it is the same as v over f minus 1. This m is the magnification. m is the magnification of the length. Is that okay? So if we're plotting u over v against v, I want you to watch something. Let me rewrite this equation. u over v equal to 1 over f times v, then minus 1. Look at v over f is the same as 1 over f times v. Now, if I compare this equation, since I'm plotting u over v against v, compare this with y equal to mx plus c. And then you would notice that your vertical axis is u over v. Then what you plotted on the horizontal axis is v, just like you're saying in the graph. Now, your slope n is equal to 1 over f for this second graph. The slope n, all right, will be equal to... 1 over f so that if you obtain the slope of this graph if you obtain the slope of this graph the value of the slope fix it here and then calculate your focal length which means that the focal length is equal to 1 over slope is that okay the slope of this graph gave a value there about 0 0.098 so if you fix that, you're going to get the focal length to be 1 over 0 0.098, which of course, okay, 10.20 centimeter. 10.20 centimeters. So that becomes a focal length. So once you plot your own graph after the experiment, plotting u over v against v, and then in the instruction, if you look at that. The instruction here, we are told to find the slope of the graph, all right, the slope of this graph. So, from what I worked on, the slope gave me 0 0.098. So, you are going to record yours once you plot your graph and, of course, get the slope. Record your own slope, are you following? And then to get the focal length, which, of course, the instruction asks you to obtain the focal length, are you following, of the length from this particular graph. All you need to do is to substitute it into this equation that the focal length is 1 over the slope of the graph. I obtained 0 0.098 in my own slope. Are you following, right? 0.098. And uh, of course, you would uh, have to do yours. The value you get, that's what you use, please. Just take note of the formula used in getting the focal length 1 over the slope. So your slope substitute, then press the calculator and uh, you see your answer there. Okay, and lastly, you're asked to calculate the error in focal length, okay, of uh, this graph. Now, error in focal length, remember, I've shown you already, you can link it to error in slope divided by slope equal to error in focal length divided by the focal length. Now, looking at my own, the error in focal length will be error in slope. I did not obtain error in slope. I've already shown you how to get error in slope using 4W divided by NR. We had W is vertical scatter and number of points. That is the number of experiments you did. And R is the range. Anyway, uh, below this video lesson, I'm going to leave a link for you that will direct you to another video lesson you need to watch on how to obtain error in a slope if you have any challenge in that. So this will be multiplied by my focal length I got is 10.2, then divided by the slope. Slope I obtained is 0.098. So suppose I had decided to obtain error in slope of this my graph. Whatever value you give to me, I'll fix it here. Then sub this out, I'll get error in what? Focal length. Just imagine that maybe the error in my slope is uh, 0.7.
So you fix 0 0.7 times 10.2 over 0 0.098, and you get the error in focal length. All right, so this is pretty much the whole analysis on this optical experiment on how to determine the focal length of a convex lens. Okay, I've taken my time to uh, explain all of this. It's really been a whole long walk, okay? But it's for good so that you get the whole idea of this experiment, all right? Because it's still pretty similar to using concave or divergent lens. All right, um, I hope you enjoyed this video lesson. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel gmats41 share these video lessons and of course invite your friends and classmates to also visit our channel and subscribe to this wonderful channel we are we continue to guide you uh, in your educational work all right i'll be seeing you in my next video lesson on this practical physics i will be showing you how you can Calculate the error in focal length, are you following right? Using a statistical knowledge of standard deviation without going through this error in slope so as to get error in another quantity as in this case. Alright, I'll be seeing you in my next video lesson.